Welcome back, you filthy last Epoch players. So finally I've managed to get my Forge Guard up to a level where I'm happy to do a bit of a build guide or a build summary on it or a part two if we want to call it that. So basically the concept of this build is we're using Manifest Armor uh, and then beyond that we're also using Forge Strike and Forge Strike when we hit it because it sounds really cool and I need to drop my audio there because that was really loud. Uh, Forge Strike then, strike then uh, raises Forged Weapons which if we have a look at the skill, Forge Strike here, uh, are these weapons here. So Forge by Fire, Forge Weapons, um, and then we level up Forge Weapons throughout the tree and into Forge Master where we have like a Great Axe following us around. Now, this is further exacerbated in damage by the use of the Sun Forged Helm and the Sun Forged Cuirass. So the stat here is 18% increased fire damage per Forge Weapon, but also uh, plus three to Forge Strike, which means you can allocate three more points. And the Helm also gives you five health regeneration per Forge Weapon at its highest possible roll. I managed to get one. 10% increased armor per Forge Weapon, which allows me to get to about 12,000 armor overall. And basically I'm then able to sort of face tank my way through echoes and through bosses and stuff like that. Now, pros and cons of this build, it's not the fastest build. There are definitely faster builds. There are definitely better builds out there. Is it fun? Yes, it's fun. Is it interesting? Absolutely. A heavy metal tank or a heavy, heavy metal paladin style necromancer is definitely really cool. The other thing is a manifest armor surprisingly can tank quite a bit. And if you can't, you just heal with healing hands and he has indefinite life. And because you as the caster are also a tank that can take some big chonky hits, uh, you can literally just healing hands your entire party and just stay alive perpetually. Uh, so the other thing that this build also does, which you would have seen in the last video, was it uses Void Cleave. It converts it to fire. And then from Void Cleave, you're able to then proc uh, Molten Blades and Scorching Path which gives you Molten Infusion on your minions, and that results in them doing even more damage to bosses and enemies of the likes. And we also use this as a technical movement speed as well, but we'll talk through this when we get to the skill section. Basically, that's the synergies here. Also, Sigils of Hope, we drop those, and then that will actually increase our life regeneration up to, I think we capped out for about 320, something like that, with like 12, you peak at about 12 Forged Weapons running around at all times. And then we get to about 12,000 armor as well once we're wound up and doing some serious damage and we've got all of our minions up. The only other disadvantages on this is mana reserva or mana uh, regeneration tends to be a little bit lapsed. So there is a bit of mana management that has to go into the build, but it's still pretty tenable. Now, the other thing also, I did have a look at other guides out there and they did say to say Sauron Step. You could use this, but I don't necessarily recommend it because you lose so many other stats that you can have on your boots. And like in my case, I have armor, I have movement speed, I have attunement, which gives me more mana, and also have resistances, which gets me to essentially almost fully capping everything less cold res. Um, so, you know, you could do that if you want for mapping or, sorry, echoing, but uh, I really just use these boots here or a well-crafted set of boots. Anyway. Uh, that's basically the gist of the build. Let's talk through the gearing and get into the guide. So for armor on this build or gearing on this build, we use the Sunforged Hel Great Helm. The reason for this is it's a set piece item that synergizes with Forge Strike. This build predominantly uses Forge Strike to do a lot of damage. It's sort of like a balance between Forge Strike and Manifest Armor with no one in particular attribute or skill being better than the other. It's just a combination. It's like an army variant of the build. But the other big advantage is big base amounts of armor, which you can get better rolls on. You get a lot of armor per forge weapons. It makes you tankier the more you spawn forge weapons. And then health regeneration on top of that, which caps you out at about 320, which is really good. Uh, outside of that, my amulet, I don't think I changed this amulet from the last video, but it's basically implicit with minion damage and crit, if you can get multi on that even better. And then we focus on things like minion health, uh, life regeneration, and a bit of life and a bit of resistance. This can definitely be upgraded, uh, so this build has places to go beyond this point. Now, weapon, Apathy's Moor is basically the best in socket. Now, the reason for that is the way that Forge, uh, the way that Manifest Armor works is that essentially Manifest Armor assumes the use of this weapon through the, through the node Titan Sword. So basically that axe is able to be used with that armor. And the reason why we have to use either a sword or an axe is just because we use Void Cleave and we use that to proc more damage with our um, Manifest Armor and our Forge weapons 
we can't really use any other weapon outside of a sword, and, a sword and an axe because that only permits the use of either of those two two-handed weapons. Now beyond that, we use the Sunforge Curse. The reason for this is we get 12% chance to forge a weapon when hit, which gives us a higher level of respawn on forged weapons. And we also get 18% fire damage per forged weapon. And this is going to proc back to your manifest armor as well, I believe. But I'm not 100% sure. I think it does though. The other big advantage of this is with the set piece with the helmet, it also gives you plus three to forge strike, which allows you to allocate 24 points to forge strike. It also gives you big base armor, increased fire damage, which is then used by the manifest armor minion. Um, we'll talk about that when we get into the skills. And it's just got a lot of base armor. So we're just stacking up armor at this stage. Now rings, uh, I have a commander's ring here, which has minion implicits, which are quite good. And then just minion rolls, health, damage, and some resistances. My belt, I managed to find a pretty good armor base belt with four potion slots. I did change out my belt from my previous uh, variant of the build because this had 128% health regeneration and mana regeneration rate, which was really useful. It also gave me minion damage, which was really good. And if you can find minion health on this, I'd also recommend that too. Uh, now, best in, so best in socket uh, ring is Ribbons of Blood. Uh, this drops from like the first area boss. Um, I haven't remembered all their names yet, uh, but it basically gives you, gives you flat health. Minions then leech health back to you on hit as well. Uh, the, the minions have a high level of leech rate and you also get five physical damage for your minions. Your minions are also crit immune, so they don't die to big hits like you would if you're running through the echoes and getting clapped every five seconds. So it's quite useful to keep basically it means your minions are pretty tanky at the end of the day so they don't constantly keep dying the only thing you're really focused on respawning is using forge strike to keep your forge weapons up and active now gloves i did find a really good set of gloves which gave me minion damage but also because we stack armor 24 percent of armor mitigation also applies to damage over time and another 15 percent on the gloves themselves so just on these gloves alone we have what's that 39 percent armor mitigation applies to damage over time plus 75 armor plus 107 health and elemental resistances so these gloves are just really 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 good they have everything that you need and it allows this build to deal with dot pretty easily uh, now boots on this build as noted you could use uh Silurion step and this will mean these boots are then applied at a rate of i think about 240 percent to your manifest armor but because this is a bit of an all-round build I have crafted boots which give me resistances, movement speed, attunement, and any implicits you could get to max out armor and movement speed. Further than that, if you get, get more armor, that would be the recommended or life at this stage. Um, beyond this point, I did have a code of an array sentinel, which is the sentinel specific relic. Every other stat means nothing except the poison resistance, but the big advantage here is plus one of sentinel skills, 26% armor, and another 28% armor mitigated uh, mitigation which applies to damage over time so i've got somewhere in the vicinity of what that's 58 that would be 66 percent i think off the top of my head if i know how to do math after a long day um of armor that's or damage uh, dot that's being mitigated by armor so that's pretty damn effective um by any measure of it uh now as far as idols i am just using like Cold conversion to physical, uh, void damage for minions. Because of the, the apathy more, my main minion, which is my manifest armor, does do void damage. Um, and then beyond that, I've also got another one that, which gives me flat armor. So we're basically looking to armor stack as much armor as we could. Uh, health, uh, I've also got some healing effectiveness and also minion physical damage. Uh, also, again, more uh, merely physical damage and healing effectiveness. Uh, this one's just a random one with physical resistance and vitality. You could switch it out for basically anything. Again, flat armor and armor percentage. And then uh, cold damage can, uh, taken as physical damage. And then more um, uh, minion physical damage on top of that as well. Okay, so for skills, we've got manifest armor, forge strikes. We've got sigils of hope. We've got void cleave and healing hands. And we use every single part of these skills too. So, Manifest Armor going first. So, first of all, we're going to start in the center. We'll go up and get Force of Impact. This is going to increase your damage based on your armor on your chest. We also want to stat that out or max that out to 160%, so four points in Plate Mail. Then we go up and we're going to get Iron Grasp into Redistributed Steel and into Titan Sword. This is going to give you a big boost in damage initially on your Manifest Armor minion, and it means they're actually going to do damage as opposed to doing no damage. 
Beyond that, you're going to get Great Helm. This is going to give you stat boost from your helm. And then I picked Whirlwind because Whirlwind's really cool. Um, and then I put four points into Steel Greaves as well, which gives you the attributes from your boots applied to your minions. So if you've got anything like uh, movement speed or, uh, you know, haste or something like that, then potentially there's the probability that that'll also apply over to your manifest armor, which will make it faster, stronger and nastier at the end of the day. Now, the second dealing uh, damage dealing minion that we've got here is actually coming off Forge Strike. So... First of all, we want to be able to cast constantly, so we need Beneath Solarium, which is going to result in four points being put in a Light Force and one in the Beneath Solarium. Then you're going to go across and get Forged by Fire, Mass Production, you'll get Well Forged uh, Weapons, and then lastly, Forge Master. And then finally, I've got five points in the Heavy Strike, which increases the damage of your Forge Weapons. And the last stat is Engines of War, which is just allocating two more points that I had, which gives them greater... Um, hit steel damage in a larger area which is aoe for your weapons whether this does anything in a major way i'm not entirely sure it's mainly just aoe but a lot of the damage that comes off the forge strike um, weapons or the forge weapons anyway is just straight direct damage so there's not too much concern about having to muck around with aoe stats and things like that uh, next of all we've got sigils of hope so basically as you're running through you're going to drop sigils and we take the, a lot of Paladin points in the passives to get to this as well, but I'll explain that in the next part of the video. More or less, you're going to go and level up into ex, uh, Exigency, and that's going to give you an increased mana cost, but it's going to make the cast instant, which is really important. You can just pop it as you're running through the map. And then we go through and we target Polygram, which is going to mean you can have you know uh, an additional stack of maximum sigils up at any point in time. Bearing in mind, if you've got max sigils and you have balanced mana a little bit better into the build beyond me, uh, this is also going to mean that you can do a lot more damage or your minions will also do a lot more damage. And that is reflected by empowering sigils. So sigils increase the damage of you and your allies. Now that I believe applies to minions at this stage, um, though it may not. Uh, but anyway, basically it's going to allow you to recover life a lot quicker and it's going to make you a little more tanky when you're in the middle of fights, so it's worth having in your build. The sub out for this, if you didn't want this, would be, I think it's Ring of Shields or something like that. Um, that would be the only other thing I would substitute that in and have that popping as you're running around constantly, so you're absorbing a lot more damage and re regenerating as you go. Now, the next thing we need is Void Cleave, so we're going to max out and go straight to Scorching Path. Um, and then this is going to give you Molten and Fusion stacks when you hit an enemy and Scorching Path is going to increase the effect of that by 150%. So you'll see once you pop it on an enemy and you Void Cleave through, you're going to do a hell of a lot more damage. The other thing is Void Cleave is really useful as a mobility skill. So we come back down and we go into Gravity's Edge as well. And this means we can use it as an actual movement skill to sort of get through big packs or get out of dodge when we need to and kite around and let our minions do the work. This will keep us alive for a hell of a lot longer. So really good skill worth having. Um, would recommend as a fourth skill to take. And then finally, because we're going into the Paladin side of the tree, Healing Hands. Healing Hands is going to keep you alive in long fights. So you can sort of have drawn out, dragged out fights. And generally as you're running around, when you're starting to get a bit down in health and you can't regenerate quickly enough and your pots aren't uh, sort of doing you enough justice, you can just sit here and just spam healing hands the entire time and stand right next to your minions and basically you're not going to die. Or there's going to be a much lower chance of you getting one shot. So basically I go up, I grab Divine Barrier, I grab Homeward, uh, and then I, uh, this means that I cast on myself by the way. So I don't have to target an ally, I just cast on myself constantly, or if I am near an ally, I cast on the ally. Um, it just means that you don't have to worry about positioning your mouse cursor, because if you're like me, you're probably lazy and you don't want to have to do that one extra step. You could if you wanted to, but I don't want to do that. Uh, then I come back down and I get Prayer of the Fallen. I then move into Vow of Restoration, Sacred Gifts. I come down to Urgent Healing and Font of Salvation, and then finally into Blessed uh, parish and into purity of thought which reduces the mana cost so you can be in negative mana arrears and still be able to cast this constantly um, and also for your own character's benefit i've got a pool that can get as high as 2000 at this stage and i'll put a level 100 um, uh, planner tree in the description below but more or less you can get away with fully hitting this and you'll fully recover your entire health pool in one hit which is really useful if you're getting hit by bosses and you're just on the edge of death um, but that's basically it for the skill trees. It's not too complicated, but there's some really interesting interactions with this build. 
Okay, so for the skill tree, obviously we're going to take Forge Master once we've unlocked it, but for the set and all, we're going to put in eight points in Juggernaut when we're leveling, another eight points in the Fearless, another five points in the Ironclad. This is going to make you a lot tanky and give you a lot more base armor. Then we're going to put 10 points in the Battle Harden. We're going to put eight points in the Guardian, another 10 points in the Folded Steel. This is going to buff up your minions, and then another six points into Might. Now, strength does increase armor, so the more strength you have, the more armor you'll have. We put four points in Iron Attunement. Again, this is going to increase your armor and the level of mana you have and your minions armor at the same time. One point in a Flawless Defender to get to Ox, uh, Oxbrick Spain. And then we want to put three points in the Shield Crafter, which means Ring of Shields will pop 3% of the time, which isn't a lot, but hey, you may it may pop when you need it. And you'll also get 150% increased minion health and 150% increased minion armor, which is why the, min the minions on this build stay alive a hell of a lot easier than probably in other builds. Um, and then beyond that point, we're going to put 25 points in a Paladin. So 5 points into Defiance, 10 points into Valor. Uh, this will get you to Healing Hands once you get to the point where we're unlocking Valor. And then 5 points into Holy Icon and 5 points into Dedication. So we get another 10% mana uh, regeneration and attunement, which increases our maximum mana. And then finally, we're going to get 6 points into the Abyssal Endurance node in the Void Knight, which eventually will max this out as well. And this is going to give us flat health, void resistance, and physical resistance at the end of the day. So it's just going to make the overall build even tankier. And then you can deal with void damage a lot more efficiently as well. And by the way, this is at about level 90, yeah, level 90 right now. So there's still 10 more points that can be allocated into this tree. All right, so I hope this build's a little more interesting than just the one button matters that are going around. I definitely... Let's start making sound. I definitely enjoy making very different builds in this game. And there's actually one that I was looking at today, which is going to be like a Poison Ghost Lich build, which I'll be leveling up on stream later. Anyway, if you've got any questions, hit me up in the description below. And there'll also be a build planner below at level 100. So you know what you're doing. Um, this build, I've gotten to 150 corruption pretty easily. It just sort of cruises through. You do need to uh, sort of dodge and dive out of the way of things now and again, as you have to do with any build in this game. I'd probably say you probably get it to about 250 corruption to 300 if you really top tier gear it, which isn't too bad considering the type of build it is. Nobody's really playing Forge Master at the moment. Well, I keep calling it Forge Master, but it's uh, Forge Guard at the moment. Anyway, anyway. If you like this type of video, don't forget to like and sub to the channel. Don't forget to follow the Twitch. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.